role model for humanity. And I, I am very specific about this. Let me give you an example. I, I've done a full series and I have books and uh, tapes about the stories of the prophets. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have written about all of them, including Jesus, Alayhi salam. I love Jesus. Wallahi, wallahi, yani, I mean, this is not uh, yani, to our Christian friends if there uh, is any here. Oh, wallahi, I love Jesus. And each Muslim should love Jesus. I'll tell you something. If a Muslim does not believe in Jesus, they are not Muslims. It's very clear in Islam, huh? This is, this is a unanimous agreement. If any Muslim rejects Jesus, that person is not a Muslim. That is the ruling of Islam unanimously. No disagreement on this issue. But I cannot take Jesus as a role model in my relation with my wife because he was not married. So how can I take him as a model? I cannot take Jesus as a model for a head of state because he did not govern. I cannot take Jesus alayhi salam with all my love and respect for him as a model for parenting. He did not have any children. Etc, etc, etc. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi was a prophet, was the political leader, the head of the state, was the judge, was the military ruler. <clears throat> there is a full study on this. And we call them the roles of the Prophet Wasallam, And there are 13 different roles. 13. Many of those brothers and sisters, I'm talking here especially to those who study Islam, do not distinguish between these roles. They don't have any distinction. They mix. So if the Prophet said something, then it is religion. No, not always. It is not always whatever he says is religion. Sometimes he speaks as a head of state, not as a prophet. Let me give you an example. In Bukhari, the Prophet said that do not preserve the meat that you slaughter at the time of Eid, Eid al-Adha, do not preserve it more than three days. You have either to eat it on this or distribute it. Very clear, huh? So, for those who read this and they don't understand the differences of roles, will take this as a religion, because it's a religious matter. It was not a religious matter. How do we know? See, you cannot take one hadith, one saying, and make a ruling. You have to take all the sayings that are related to the same issue, and then you can make a ruling. So there is another hadith in the same book that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, was approached by one of the companions and said, Prophet of Allah, last year in the Eid, he came to him at the time of Eid, last year in the Eid, the festival, you ordered us not to preserve meat more than three days. Is it okay if we do it this year? So the Prophet ﷺ said, I did not give you a religious order. I gave you this order because there was hunger in Arabia. And many tribes who could not find food came and camped around Medina. So I wanted to feed them. So I gave this order to make you either eat it or give them. So this year, and from now on, you can eat or preserve. It's up to you. So that first order, was it a religious order? 
He played the role of the head of state. He spoke in that capacity. Let's take another example. Az Zubair ibn al Awam is a, one of the great companions of the Prophet. He had a huge garden in Medina. And when rain came, when rain comes to Medina, it will move in the channels and it will pass through his garden. And then it continues to other gardens. So Az Zubair said, uh, decided to build a dam in his garden. So he did build a, a dam, and all the water was his. But that stopped water from coming to the other gardens. So one of the companions who had another garden that now doesn't have any water complained to the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ asked az Zubair to come. He came, explained to him, this is the situation. So he said, the Prophet said, Zubair, take what you need and leave the rest to the others. See, the, the companions understood that he plays different roles. And if they are in doubt, they will ask. So the Zubair said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, are you giving me an order or are you advising me? He said, no, I'm advising you. As Zubair said, I will not do it. He refused the order of the Prophet because it was not an order. They did not take all his words as religion. It depends on the role he plays. Another example. When the Prophet ﷺ went to the first major battle of Islam, Badr, he camped in a certain area. Al-Hubab ibn al-Mundir, one of the companions, he was not a leader. He was a soldier in the army. Came to him. Look, look. Yeah, they distinguish very clearly. And if they cannot, they ask. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, did you choose this place to camp because it is the revelation from Allah? Ahuwa al wahi Am hiya al harbu wal ra'yu wal makida? Or is it a military choice that you thought it would be the best? He said, No, it is not a revelation. It is my choice as a military leader. He said, Hubab said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, this is a bad decision. And he showed him why it was a bad decision. And the Prophet ﷺ agreed it was a bad decision, and he moved the camp. So not everything that he says is a religious saying. Last example, nice example. There was a woman in Medina. Her name is Barira, who was married to a man. His name is Mughith. And they both were slaves. Barira was freed by her owner. Now it was the ruling before Islam gave the rules by the way to abolish slavery. So all the rules came gradually. So this is before that. He gave the order, uh, she was freed. The system was that if she is freed and her husband is a slave, she has the choice of staying with him or leaving him. So she decided to leave him. Mughith loves Barira. So he tried to convince her to continue with him. She refused. So he went to the great companion and the first Khalifa after the Prophet, Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr came to, decided to intervene to help him. So he, Abu Bakr came to Barira. He said, Barira, please stay with Mughith. She said, I will not. So Mughith takes the issue to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ decided to intervene in this issue. So he went to Barira. And he said, Barira, stay with Mughith. Now, these are words of the Prophet. 
She could not distinguish what role is he playing. So she said, are you talking as a prophet or are you talking as a consultant? A nabiyun am mushir. He said, no, I am in this issue a consultant. She said, I will not stay with him. And she did not. The rest of the story, Mughith continued to walk behind Barira wherever she goes. Please stay with me. <laughs> story of, great story of love. <laughs> One-sided love. <laughs> so, back to the issue of Murtad, those who leave their religion. Now, if it is a law, the Prophet ﷺ will apply the law, no matter what. In all cases, right? The Prophet says, so there is a law that we cut off the hand of the thieves. This is a law. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Wallahi, if my own daughter Fatima steals, I would cut off her hand. It's a law. Now it is proven that there are people who left their deen, and the Prophet ﷺ did not kill them. So it's not a law. He was speaking, inshallah, he was speaking in the capacity of a head of state. Why? It is in the Quran that a group of the Jews wanted to shake the faith of the new Muslims. This is in the Quran. And said, let us embrace Islam in the morning and leave it at night. And tell everyone that we became Muslims, we saw it's a bad religion, and uh, we have the knowledge as Jews of the scriptures, and we have seen that it is wrong, so that's why we left it. So they wanted to play a game. The Prophet Shukran. In response to this game, gave the order. If you change your religion, you will be killed. You cannot play with religion. So it was a political order. How do we know it's a political order? Again, if it was a law, it will be applied to anyone, no exception. I can give you at least seven exceptions that people change their religion and they were not killed by the Prophet ﷺ. So we really, really need to really understand Islam from the original sources, how it was applied by the Prophet ﷺ and by the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the, the first four that the Prophet ﷺ told us to take them as role models because they applied the true Islam. So anything that came later in history, the Umayyad dynasty, the Abbasid dynasty, the Ottoman dynasty, the present kingdoms, etc., this, this has nothing to do with Islam. Huh? We go to the original Islam. So that is the, the message that we are spreading today. And we believe that those who reject us do it out of tradition, do it out of the way they were taught. They never heard about this before, so it is wrong. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? You have not heard about it, then it is wrong. <laughs> what is that? That is not logic, huh? that is not a proof. You go and study the proofs. I want to give one example that I gave to Azman and the brothers before I came here. Many uh, non-Muslims laugh at our Prophet وسلم, because he married a child, Aisha. Now let's go back to this and use, use the correct sources. A narrator said 
and this is in Bukhari, that the Prophet ﷺ married Aisha when she was nine. The contract was when she was nine. And then the actual marriage happened when she was 11. Now this is a saying by one man. And this is in Bukhari. But there is another hadith in Bukhari. And go and check it. That Aisha says, I wrote